think we will take questions now. Um, can I ask uh, James? You might kick it off on conditionality. There's some questions in there. Um, if you want to kick them off, buffer zones is the first one. There's a couple. You might take a group of them together, and and uh, we move over to own then maybe on AMS. Okay, Mike, you can hear me again. Yep. Okay, I j just uh, with the flow of them, I might uh, work uh, the opposite way, Mike, and, and get through them quickly. Uh, that's all right. Um, are sanctions applied as a percentage of BIS or are ECO, CRIS, ANC payments also affected? The answer to that is um, if sanctions are applied to more than BIS. So it does include uh, if you're an applicant uh, under ECO, CRIS, ANC uh, payments, they will also be affected. That, that percentage penalty will be applied to it as well and to schemes such as um, acres and um, organics you know so all those area based based payments so um, yeah it, it applies to rural development measures uh, such as those as well um, the next one up uh, regarding intentional non-compliance a penalty is up by 15 percent is quoted what is this calculated on is it calculated on just base or 15 percent so it, it is all all, all the schemes, uh, but it doesn't include TAMs, just to clarify that. Um, can you give some examples of what an intentional non-compliance would be? Um, I suppose here we're, you know, something, a deliberate act, um, or where maybe a non-intentional sanction is not appropriate. So in terms of a deliberate act, you know, it might be something where, um, you know, um, farm waste is, um, Directly discharged into into a water course or that you know maybe uh, something is uh, piped direct, directly in to a drain or water course, uh, or you could have situations in terms of uh, Gaia Gate where uh, the removal of an, a national monument or um, removal of a, a hedgerow on a, an acres or a glass uh, a glass uh, farm you know in, in, intent would be uh, considered uh, in those cases kind of you know so. Um, Hopefully there's those examples uh, give a favour. Uh, what is uh, GAIAC? GAIAC is a uh, good agricultural and environmental condition. So maintaining those, those uh, standards of GAIACs on, on holdings. Uh, how long does a penalty last uh, under non-compliance? Uh, so it is that particular year. So if a non-compliance is found in 2023, the penalties, uh, percentage penalties applied in 2023, it's... Um, you know, a clean slate again in 2024. But as I said before, that if a non-compliance is found in 2024 again, uh, the same non-compliance is found, should I say, um, a higher sanction will be applied in 2024 or 2025 because that it th would be uh, applying the three consecutive year rule. But um, if 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 you're clear the following year or the second year after, you know, the penalty doesn't there's no penalty. In terms of hedgerow removal, what constitutes the exceptional circumstances? Um, I suppose uh, these are um, the uh, these will um, are as I mentioned the, the booklet that that will that will come out and, and they're, they're they're specified in that. So they're relating to um, uh, some road safety uh, measures um, or where 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 does some 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 risks evolve in terms of. Um, um, uh, of that that extent to kind of you know or a farm safety issue um so in terms of road safety you know wh where there might, might have to be uh verified uh by the local authority or, or the national roads authority that there's an unacceptable risk uh and um possibly in terms of building work kind of in terms of farmyard expansion uh or the widening uh, of gaps to facilitate larger access for for uh, larger machinery but in no way does it does it mean a kind of you know that you can take out a, a hedgerow just to uh, um, because you want to expand the area within one parcel by the removal of of a, of a dividing internal uh, hedgerow. So um, yeah, so we're looking at road safety, uh, specific uh, maybe building work and um, or, or safe safety issues. Um, let me see, is that as there then, Mike? Um, yeah, I think we're just with the buffers then. So, uh, can you confirm which water courses, drains, ditches they apply to? What is the situation in relation to forage crops, graze, and situ? Um, so, 
Yeah, in terms of the buffers, uh, we're talking about um, all water courses, you know, whether they are um, on um, all water courses on OSI, uh, one is to 5,000 scaled maps, whether they are, um, you know, um, carrying water all year round or, um, or, or dry maybe for a couple of months. Um, and whether they are marked with uh, directional fl flows or not, so and that 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 uh, that is marked, but also uh, and also and anything that is carrying water uh, for for more than nine months uh, of the year, uh, those 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 are uh, uh, water courses that are considered in terms of the buffer zones. Um, I think that's them, Mike. And Miss you have anything to add or picked up? No, I'll go back. Said. I think you 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 got them all. Um, Owen, can I ask you? There's there's a few in there on, on area monitoring. Can I ask you maybe to uh, group them again and and uh, take them? Uh, absolutely, Mike. Yeah, I have gone down through them. Just there's a couple after coming there at the last second. I will get to them maybe at the second round. Uh, just first of all, sorry, I forgot my presentation. And Stephen mentioned there is a guide that has been sent out to every BIS potential applicant uh, for 2023 on the area monitoring system. So it's a page on the area monitoring page in AgriSnap, and it basically gives you an outline of what that looks like, uh, what it means, how to engage with it, all that. So that's a very important piece of information for everybody to have a look at in that BIS pack. And I think it was sent out last week. Um, okay, the questions. Um, there was a question there about the validation of the software when it comes to inputs and outputs and things like that. So the first and first of all, uh, we're striving to have a very, very efficient um, system. The area monitoring system is highly automated. Um, we have, it's not something that we've just started on this year. The, the CBM was introduced in 2020. We've been building markers, crop classification, sorry, 2021. We've been building markers and crop classifications for those schemes since then. Um, and there's stringent controls around what goes into the area monitoring system, and then a sophisticated rules engine in place to understand what comes out of it. Um, so rest assured on that one, it is, it's, it's a, there's a significant amount of validation at every step. Um, there's a question there about uh, deducting ineligible areas. And I think this is more got to do with <clears throat> excuse me, making your uh, scheme applications. But there is editing tools as you move through to your BIS screens. Uh, there's editing tools there that you can uh, take out ineligible areas so you can draw them out. Uh, the latest imagery will appear and you can use those editing tools to do that. There is step-by-step -step guidance uh, on the department's website. Um, so that can be available as well to help. Um, additionally, if, you, if somebody wants to add a parcel or a plot, there's an add facility and you can add the parcel number if it's known or add a plot and from there then the department will um, draw it in or include it in your application. There's a question about how mountain land will be uh, uh, integrated into the area monitoring system. And uh, the easiest answer for that is the mountain land, if it has a land, if it's a land parcel number that's on a scheme claim, it will be dealt with no differently than any other parcel. It will move through the area monitoring system it will be checked for the parcel integrity, is there any ineligible features? It will be assessed for uh, the crop declared and it will be assessed for uh, activities over a period of time. Um, there's a question on scrub. Um, I, I believe the land eligibility uh, areas was all covered on Tuesday's webinar, so could I refer you to that? But essentially, um, just to give you an answer to your question, if the scrub is less than 50% of the land parcel, the entire land parcel is now eligible. Okay, but I would like to refer you to that presentation on Tuesday night. Uh, there is another question about Sentinel one and two, and if I'm reading it or understanding it correctly, and please come back in the questions if I'm not, it's around circumvention and using paper maps just to reduce uh, other requirements. Uh, circumvention is not permitted under any circumstances anywhere in the department or any of the schemes that we deliver. The MS is not going to pick up circumvention, but what it will do, it will over time pick up that there may be no activity in those parcels. It may pick up that there's ineligible structures in those parcels. And at that stage, then um, notifications will be sent to the farmer and our rapid field visits may arise from there. So that's just how I'm going to answer that one. And um, there's a question about um, um, a concrete um, 
cattle pen uh, and should that be marked out? Absolutely, all ineligible areas uh, should be marked out and a concrete area um, is an artificial surface that has to be digitized out. There's not a question about a grass roadway or the roadway was there once upon a time, the department digitized it, it's there in the system, it's taken out of the parcel now when it comes to the calculations for eligible hectare. Um, it's completely grassed over is what it says here in the question. There's editing facilities uh, as, as you make your way through the BIS online system, request an eligible hectare change and from there then you can add your comments. You can submit a geotag photograph if you wish as well and then those comments will be taken on board by the digitizing um, people and that will be taken out and the eligible hectare increased. And lastly, um, or the last question I saw, and I'll come back to the questions in a second, the cloud slider on the uh, Sentinel Play Hub that I just I showed, that what that cloud slider simply does is that allows you to select images that have, for example, 20% or less cloud in them. And then when you click back in to the calendar option that's right beside it, the dates that have a light gray circle around them are the dates that constitutes images with less than 20%. I hope that's clear. It's the, the dark gray ones are images that are greater than 20%. And I just picked 20%, you can pick 50, but if you pick 50, you'll quickly start to see an awful lot of clouds. Um, and then as you move back through the dates or back through the months, all of the light grade dates are the images with less than 20%. Okay, it takes a little bit of playing around, but after 10 minutes, you, you'll have you, you'll quickly be able to understand it. I might hand it back to you, Mike, and I'll go through the next set of questions here, just down through them. Okay, Owen, thanks. I uh, There's quite a few on AgriSnap, but uh, there was one there that I suppose it, it, it there's a few questions falling between stools. Um, one was how I think Marita asked a question about uh, how do you uh, apply for land that was never applied on before. Uh, well, if if there is a lightness parcel number, it's it's as simple as adding that to your uh, BIS application this year. Uh, if it's never never been applied before, uh, it's a case of uh, getting uh, uh, the map uh, and uh, getting a, a red marker and uh, tracing it around the boundary and submitting that. Obviously, the details the map would have to contain the townland and and uh, uh, that type of information. Uh, a general question as, as uh, responsible for the inspections that came in there uh, a few minutes ago, questions are flying in. Uh, how will the department ensure consistency across the inspectors? Well, um, within the, the, the inspection, though the region, the country is broken up into seven regions, there's district inspectors in charge of each region. We give detailed guidance manuals uh, to all our staff. We train them annually. Um, uh, you know, we, we, we bring them in regional, local briefings, uh, so they have clear guidance and examples of, of what is uh, uh, acceptable, what is not, what's a, a minor issue, what's uh, a sanctional issue, uh, and they, they, they apply that. Uh, again, there's uh, also all inspections are supervised uh, when they come back in, so our supervisory staff, we check 100% of files uh, and uh, we ensure consistency uh, Within regions and across regions, based on that, based on the, the guidance that we're giving our staff. Uh, Stephen, I'll hand it over to you because there's quite a few there on the Agri Snap, uh, and some of it's kind of you, you dealt with in the presentation, but there's some new ones there that I've seen for the first time. So I'll hand it over to you. Okay, so the first one here is someone who has downloaded Agri Snap, but the phone is not receiving the, the six digit code. Um, for issues like this, any any kind of a login issue, you're better off um, contacting us through agrisnap at agriculture.gov.ie because there can be a number of things involved here, but we generally get them solved within the day. Um, so yeah, e e email the address, the address, and we we look at it as soon as we can and get to uh, get resolve it somehow. Um, what happens if there's no coverage where your land is? How do you use AgriSnap? That's what I was saying. If you if you access AgriSnap when you're in an area of good coverage, so when you're in your house, when you're at home, uh, in your office, where you're in an area of good coverage, you can access AgriSnap and it will remain working in the background in your phone. Even if you enter an area of good of poor coverage, it will work offline. So when you enter the field and there's no coverage within the field, AgriSnap goes offline, but it still works. It will still provide you all the functionality and it will still, um, the GPS GPS works completely differently. You do not need coverage for GPS to work. So that's why we recommend that you log in. It's the advice that we give advisors. 
log in at home in the morning um, and your, your AgriSnap will, keep, will remain working on your phone for, I said, for, for up to 48 hours. Um, where's my next question? Yeah, we AgriSnap requests, unfortunately, AgriSnap requests are only received within the app itself. For AMS, you will be provided a notification through through AgFood or through, and but the actual AgriSnap request itself will, will be sent out within the app. There's no text received associated with an AgriSnap request, and there's no your phone won't buzz. However, what will happen is if you have a registered advisor, your advisor will receive the AgriSnap request. The farmer themselves are. Um, will receive the AgriSnap request, and it's just a matter of logging in regularly and making sure that there are no requests pending sitting on sitting on your app. Um, if you replace your phone, you lose your phone, or you get a new phone number, yet again contact us through AgriSnap at agriculture.gov.ie. We will need to re reassign a phone number to that account, um, and only that that can only be done within within uh, the department. So just contact us, and we can do that. Um, I, there's a few questions in about your your, your AgriSnap login. Your AgriSnap login is the details that you use currently to log into your online systems for, for DAFM. So your AgFood username and password. If you're an advisor, it's your AGA or your AGT number and the password that you use. Um, for Registering for any online service with the department, you would have a username and password, and it is, it is that username and password that are used to log into AgriSnap. However, you must you must have registered as an or you must have uh, be registered as a as a as a farmer with the department to use it, or as an advisor. Um, if I if there's one one here if if I change my phone will my photos transfer with my phone? Unfortunately, not. The the phone that the or the instance of the app on the phone holds the photos. If you open the app on a different phone, the photos will will not appear on that phone. And um, if you are changing phone, we recommend that you submit any photos that need to be submitted. The photos will stay in the app on that phone. Um, yet again, if there's a if there's a crisis or we may be able to provide some sort of advice at the time, but currently. If you switch phone, the photos will not transfer with to the new phone. And there's also one or two questions there regarding overclaim, what we call overclaims. Unfortunately, at the moment, AgriSnap does not cover overclaims. Um, it's something that we're currently working on, but at the moment, it's 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 not possible. It may, it may be later in the year, but it's it's not currently supported with an Agri, AgriSnap. There is guidance that was provided recently with the on the same page as the best terms and conditions on the agriculture. Um, food and the Marine website and um, that, that provides details on how to submit photos in those cases. I'll go back to you Mike and I think that that's it for the moment. There's one or two more questions but I, I, I'll look at them now. Stephen there was uh, just as I was going through there was one there about kind of how long the the request is is the, the um, snap geotype photo is is allowed. Is, did you go for that one? Sorry, no, I missed I missed that one. Um, the the request will will remain on the phone, but it's more to do with the the claim must be updated 15 days before um, the the payment goes out. The the, the early payment comes out. So if 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 the AgriSnap photo is not received by then, um, the the payment will be delayed. Yeah, and that was there was another question about the penalty if you don't submit it on time. So there isn't a penalty, but obviously, until we get the the, the photograph and, and verify it, uh, you you you, uh, uh, you can't get paid on that parcel. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, Geraldine, we might. I saw uh, a couple there on protein. I think. Yeah, there's only about five or six, sir, Mike. Go on. I'll take them now. I think the first one is starting with. Can you apply for these schemes if you're an organic farmer? Yes, there's no there's no bar if you've been an organic farmer, you just have to meet the terms and conditions of the scheme. So there's no issue once it's not in contravention to anything you have to do under organic measures. Uh, the next one is hemp included as a protein crop. No, it's not one of the listed crops. Um, in relation to sim, if I have oilseed rape and oats on and I wish to claim for the oilseed rape, do I have to include the oats in strong corporation scheme? 
No, when you go into the strong corporation scheme on the system, when you're on your BIS application, you tick the parcels that you want to include for the strong corporation measure. So if you have multiple crops, multiple tillage crops, tick which ones you want to include. You're not obligated to include them all. Um, I'll just go on through them and see what else I have now. Uh, is tillage incentive scheme available in 2023? Yes, it is. Um, what else have I? Protein mix 50-50 and SIM be claimed together. No, the protein mix 50-50 is not an eligible crop under SIM. So the answer to that is um, no. Um, I think that's all mine, Mick. Yeah, that looks to be all mine. Is there any, uh, any, anyone else want to pick up on questions that I'm just going down through them to see? Um, Getting to one there about roadways. Uh, how how do uh, roadways built in the last couple of years be, beside water courses comply with the new regulations? Um, well, I suppose the requirement there on all farms is that um, there can be no d direct discharge uh, from the uh, roadway into the water course. Uh, so, uh, look, mitigation may have to be uh, looked at. Um, so you're you're, you're looking at um, ensuring the uh, camber. Uh, across the surface of the roadway goes um, to the other side, um, towards the field side rather than, than the water course, or you're looking at maybe constructing a, a bank of, a bank of soil along the, the side of the roadway that, that prevents the soil water from entering the the, um, the waters. Um, that was something on conditionality there, Mike. Okay. There's a question here just on the webinars viewable after tonight. Uh, they'll be on uh, the DAFM YouTube uh, channel, uh, again, so people can go back over them and use them as reference um, uh, later on. Uh, Owen, is there anything there for you? Uh, Geraldine, you answered the protein mix. Uh, 50, yeah, you did. I just want to make sure we got them all. Uh, just there again, Mike, and conditionality uh, regarding landscape features. If the remnants of a stone wall exist in a parcel which has been broken down over the last 200 years, can it be removed? And if so, can it be replaced elsewhere? A stone wall is not a, a designated landscape feature under GOIAC. So if it's a stone wall, it can it can, it can be um, it can be moved without without any. Um, um, uh, concerns. Um, okay. Um, do buffer zones need to be fenced or just maintained for fertilizer spreading? Uh, they don't have to be fenced. The only requirement around fencing of water courses is uh, in relation to those herds over 170 kgs of nitrogen per hectare. Um, the the fencing there is of 1.5 meters out. But the three the three meter uh, buffer zones referred to earlier, they don't need to be fenced. Just uh, kept free from uh, being uncultivated uh, for arable crops or non grass forage crops, and for the non non application of fertilizer and chemicals in that area. Okay, um, not sure, Stephen. Uh, will with AgriSnap, can I use the same phone number for more than one herd application? Can one phone number be assigned to more than one account? Might have answered that already. Um, I believe so. Yes, yeah, because the it's the combination of the user and the phone number, so it can be a different user but the same phone. You can log into to to, to different accounts. It's what's more. I was just there's another there's another question down there about logging in to logging into on a different phone. That is that is part. You can log into an AgriSnap account from a different phone, but remember that the the six-digit code will be sent to the red the phone register to the account. So if you have your if you have a work phone and a, a personal phone, and and you leave leave your work phone at home and go out into the field and try and use your your personal phone, the six-digit code will be sent to the work phone if that's the one registered to AgriSnap. Um, and to get the that phone number changed, you have to email. AgriSnap at agriculture.gov.e. We will change that. We will change that phone number, but it will not be while you're standing in the field. Unfortunately, it, it will take a little bit of time. Um, there is also um, are AgriSnap photos stored within the app, or can they be moved? No, they're, they're stored within the instance of the app on that phone. 
they can't be transferred between phones. They can be submitted from that phone to the department. They cannot be downloaded from the phone. They cannot be screenshot from the phone. They are captured within the instance of the app. That is why it's critically important you do not uninstall that instance of the app from the phone because once that instance of the app is removed from, or uninstalled from that phone, we have no access, we cannot retrieve those photos. Um, was there any more? Can two separate phones be logged in for the same LAN parcels? If a request is sent to one phone, can another phone log into the account and submit the photos? It, 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 you can, you can open the request from any phone as long as you have the correct username, password, and you, you receive the six digit code. However, that's what I was saying, the six digit code will be sent to the phone that's registered. So if you do not have access to the, to the phone number that's registered, you won't be able to access the app, so you will not be able to access the request. Okay. Uh, James, there's one there, conditionalities, it's, it's in capitals, that's why I saw it. Um, where an area of scrub exists in a parcel, it is more probably land eligibility than, than conditionality, but we can take it. Where an area of scrub exists in a parcel, can this be removed in the applicable period? So I presume that's outside the bird nesting season. Starting off, right? Yeah, outside outside uh, that period, uh, it's it's fine, Mike. Uh, in terms of removal, because scrub is not uh, a designated landscape feature again under 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 Gaiac. But I suppose we have with the, with the new cap um, the, to try and have some coherence between pillar one and pillar two. Um, you know that scrub is being counted in terms of non-productive area. Uh, under under GAIAC 8 and but also for eco schemes so it has a value you and you will get paid on that area in terms of land el eligibility up to 50% of the of uh of the parcel um so um what, what I'm alluding to is that there shouldn't be as as as, uh, as big a requ as as real a need or a requirement to remove that uh, area of scrub I suppose in terms of uh, recognize there is a recognition now of the the biodiversity um, benefits of that scrub area. Okay, someone asked a question about uh, getting their queries uh, through Ag Food. Uh, answer to that, so uh, that, that that will still apply. Uh, is there a DAFM glossary of all acronyms? Uh, apologies, we, we probably um, are. are we talk about uh, Sims, uh, uh, Tisses, um, Acres. Yes, there would be in the terms and conditions uh, that there is a, a glossary contained with, within that. And apologies if we're, we have a habit of, of, of talking uh, about the, the acronyms and such. Um, still questions coming in. Uh, this is Geraldine. I'm not sure is this. It's just uh, it's hemp again. I think since farmers are being licensed to grow hemp. Why is it not included as a protein, or is the list final? Well, the list is final for 2023. Yeah, the is final. So the protein crops are beans, peas, lupin, soybean, and a protein cereal mix, and hemp is not listed as one to crop, so not in, unfortunately. The reason for that, from my previous life uh, on the crop side, hemp does not fix nitrogen. These are, uh, you know, someone asked before, but I'll see rape. Uh, it's a high protein crop. Why was that not included? Uh, the, 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 um, the, 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 it, in effect, the nitrogen in that case, it's coming from the bag rather than the, the so for protein aid, they're, they're nitrogen fixing crops uh, and they're the only ones currently that, that, that are grown or have been grown in the country. Um, uh, buffer zones, I'm not sure, did you get that one? Uh, do buffer oh, fence, no, you got that one, sorry. Um, can walls be removed altogether? James. Yeah, I think I got that one, Mike. Okay, apologies. Mm -hmm. uh, I've recently bought, I'm going to wrap it up now pretty, uh, just make sure. I've recently bought a small amount of land which is overgrown with bushes, furs, and I plan to reclaim back to a more efficient pasture. What do I need to be aware of? Good question, removing scrub and bushes in fields. 
Yeah, well, first of all, you need to be aware of the um, the bird breeding and, and, and nesting period, kind of the first of uh, March to um, the end end of August. You know, um, can, cannot be done within that period. Uh, first of all, and um, after that, then um, you know, just um, in terms of just make make sure that they're not taking removing a landscape feature such as hedgerow. Uh, lines of lines of trees, and uh, that it, it is what a, what has been said there in terms of bushes, maybe that are out in, uh, in a field, that it, that would be okay then outside that uh, bird breeding and nesting period. Okay, thanks, James. Uh, just on buffer, does the three meter buffer also apply to larger rivers, the bind, the shore, or is it wider along the rivers? Not any, not any wider, uh, Mike. Same, yeah, the same buffer, whether it's the shore or a, 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 an internal field drain, it's the same. Um, is there time limitations to cleaning drains on the same land? You refer to bird nesting period, which is from March to the end of August. Uh, does that apply in relation to cleaning out drains? I, I, that's my interpretation of the question. <laughs> No, same same um, uh, considerations don't apply in that case. No, so and to follow just, on. Just, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I suppose uh, just some uh, common sense in terms of you know, um, I suppose uh, style disturbance. You know that it would there wouldn't be excessive uh, uh, rushing by machinery. Maybe you know um, at, at a time when you know. Uh, if, uh, Land could be particularly wet or that, like you know. So, just just common sense, I suppose, in that in that case. Clarification here on Agri Snap, uh, Stephen. Uh, do I understand it correctly that when changing your mobile uh, phone but keeping the same number, respectively same SIM, the photos are no longer available for the farmer on the new phone? Can the photo still be accessed by the farmer somewhere on the DAFM system? So they're changing the phone, keeping the SIM. Keeping the phone number, uh, are the photos there or are they keeping, gone? Keep, keeping the SIM, I'm actually unsure of, to be honest. I'd have to go back and, and to the developers and find that out. It, it hasn't been something that has, has cropped up before. Um, I know generally changing your phone, even if you retain the phone number, changing your phone, which I'm sure... Un, Unsure, does that require to keep to keep the sim or not? The instance of, of AgriSnap on the phone is what keeps is holds the photos. So switching between phones, the fo the phone stays to the photo. It doesn't travel with the account. Um, photos will only be in the DAFM servers if they've been submitted. So photos that have not been submitted. We, we have no access to them. We have no access to the phones. That it's a it's a security issue. We we do not want access. We we can't retrieve information from from phones. Um, the the individual has to actually submit it to us. Once we have it, it's kept within our servers. But um, there's no ability to transfer photos between phones. As I said, that you can't screenshot the photos. Um, you can't text them to 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 a different phone or WhatsApp them or anything like that. Um, it's captured within the app. The, just, just to point out, the app is not a photo storage app. It's a data capture app, which means you are requested to provide evidence of a, a crop or a feature. You go out, you take that photo, submit that photo to us. Once it's received, it can be deleted from the phone um, or you can store it if you want. But obviously, the more, st more photos you store, the slower the app and the slower your phone will get. It's not designed to store hundreds of photos. So it would be good practice that photos you are not going to submit should be removed or deleted from your phone or photos that you've submitted and have been received and you will see the received received comes up under the photo um, and as the, the, the actual request itself will come up as being received, um, they, can be, they can be deleted from your phone. Okay. Um, there was just a general question. Uh, the um, answers to the questions will be available on the recorded webinar. Yes, that's my understanding. Uh, the, the session, the entire session will be there. Uh, last couple. Uh, someone comment on ECO. Uh, we didn't deal with ECO tonight. It was dealt with on Tuesday, but 
The, um, on, on ECO, there is, uh, I think, seven or eight uh, actions. Some of them are quite specific, uh, you know, kind of geared towards uh, tillage, such as growing a break crop, uh, the, the um, using the use of GPS fertilizer spreader um, and uh, space for nature, uh, hedgerow uh, planting, tree planting, uh, they're all there. So I, I would suggest maybe go back to the presentation on Tuesday and also the terms and conditions uh, that's up on the DAFM website has a lot of detail there in relation to the eco options. Um, Arcs if uh, arcs if natura if removing walls etc. I need to be respected. Ob absolutely. If you're uh, removing uh, Liam, if you're removing um, uh, anything in relation to uh, in, in natura land, you have to respect uh, the arcs. That's the first thing uh, that, as, as James said, first of all, it has to be within the uh, in the open season, uh, which is after the uh, first of September, uh, and uh, you have to respect the actions requiring consent. Sorry, I'm going back to the acronyms. They're called ARCs, and they're specific to each and every uh, Natura site. Uh, can photos already submitted still be accessed by the farmer somewhere on the DAFM system? I think you've answered that. Uh, so, folks, it's uh, nearly quarter to nine. Um, I'd like to thank uh, my um, uh, presenters tonight, James, Owen, Stephen, uh, Geraldine. Uh, as I said, the presentations uh, will be available on the DAFM YouTube uh, site. Um, and the next session is on uh, next Tuesday. And it's, uh, again, the same time, 7, 7 uh, p.m. So please uh, feel free to register. It's actually going to be on entitlements, uh, the National Reserve, and the Young Farmer Scheme. Uh, so three very important topics. And the final session uh, will be on the 4th of April, and that's going to deal with the suck, I'm, I'm conscious of acronyms, Suckler Carbon Efficiency Programme, or, or the replacement for the old Beef Data Genomics Programme, the National Dairy Beef Welfare Scheme, and the Beef Welfare Scheme. So the, the beef schemes will be dealt with uh, on, on, on the 4th of April. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your participation. Thank you for all the questions. I hope you found it useful, and uh, good night.